Welcome to the Driver's Line. I'm Greg. And I'm Jordan. And today, we've got a conversation for you. And our conversation is happening again at the New York Auto Show here in this wonderful Ford Mustang CS Convertible. Yes, this is the GTCS, so right. CS stands for California Special. We talked about this quite a few months ago when it was announced, but we're actually sitting in it here at the Auto Show today, and it is a nice, nice convertible. And the reason that we are sitting in a convertible is because today's topic is all about the best convertibles in each category. I know. So we actually came up with five different categories of convertibles that we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about Grand Touring, Sports Cars, Supercars, Economy, and SUVs. That's right. Yeah. So uh, we're going to start off here, I think, at the bottom rung, and that's our Economy choices. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and work our way up. <laughs> All right. What's, what's you you can lead us off there here. There we go. All right. Um, so I, I have a feeling, and and... I haven't talked to Greg about this, but Greg is going to pick something that's close to near and dear to his heart. So I'm going to avoid that. I never do that. <laughs> so we're going to, I'm going to give him some space there. And I'm going with an alternate pick. Um, and this is one that has four seats. It has an okay amount of storage capacity, uh, but even more, obviously. When you fold down to four seats, uh, they're sporty, they're fun, they come in multiple flavors. And that's the Mini Cooper Convertible. Um, Specifically, I really dig the John Cooper Works version. That's a turbocharged one. It's got 228 horsepower. It's not super quick. 066.3. That's still fast enough. But oh, it's that's more plenty. about the yeah, I mean, back in back in the old days when I had my BRZ, I got smoked by a Mini. So <laughs> the Minis were definitely very very quick. So you definitely don't want to sleep on them. They're very very sporty. They drive like go karts. My sister in law has one. It's named George, okay, um, yeah. and it is just a fantastic little run around. I mean, they're a lot of fun to drive, and hers is just the base model. Yeah, I think uh, the the fact that you have a four seat sort of option sort of. <laughs> <laughs> along with the fun handling characteristics it's really best of both worlds type situation especially for the amount that you're paying i mean they start at about thirty-five thousand, which sounds like a lot of money but mm -hmm. in today's market that's pretty affordable <laughs> that is very affordable actually and so i went with something else that was affordable given okay. our economy uh yes. topic here and i did choose something near and dear to my heart as you <laughs> might imagine a car that i've owned two of in the past but <laughs> i decided to go with the mazda miata the nd2 181 horsepower, okay. Okay. and I'm going, of course, with the Club Edition. Very nice. Oh, I like the Club Edition. Yeah, That's so, a good thing. Yep, you get the revised suspension. You can go ahead and uh, offer the, the Brembo and Recaros, mm -hmm. um, and you still come in less than your Mini Cooper. I think it's a great pick. I mean, there's a reason that Miata is the answer to every question, yes. right? Miata stands for <laughs> Miata is always the answer. Yeah. And Jordan, post prod, we're going to want that right there. <laughs> so I, I think that if you just need two seats... <laughs> I mean, that was a great pick. And you want some storage in the trunk because I bet you just got more than that many. We'll have to do a little spec spec racing with that. <laughs> <laughs> Minis versus Miatas. It's going to be the new spec series. I like it. <laughs> Coming to you guys soon. <laughs> Strictly just based off cargo capacity. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, stepping up the list, do you want to do SUVs? Things? Yes, we'll All go right. on SUVs next. All right. Wonderful. Um, so my pick for uh, SUV convertible comes to us from the land of General Motors. Mm. Uh, and it's one that I think uh, they did a really good job in terms of capturing its target audience, and that's the GMC Hummer EV. Oh! All right, yeah. Um, oh! Now, I will say, we did get a chance to sit in it. Interior materials are not quite up to snuff, I will, I will say. Yeah, for a $100,000 pickup, <laughs> like, I mean, this was honestly one of the biggest disappointments. This is the first time I was able to sit yeah. in one of the new GMC Hummer EVs, and, like, everything creaks and rattles and pops and squeaks and... Yeah. For a hundred thousand bucks, just not great. Really, the one piece that we were both convinced that sounded so much more solid than anything else were the l latches on the roof. Which brings me to the reason I picked it. So, <laughs> we're ignoring the interior right now. Hopefully, with a mid-cycle update, we'll we'll touch on that a yes. little bit more uh, once GM starts getting LTM going. But um, I mean, it has fantastic performance specs that no one else is really touching except the Cybertruck. Uh, <laughs> oh. But the fact that you can have that. You have a vehicle that can go off-road. You have the ability to remove all the four panels with built-in stowage mm -hmm. for it. Um, and it's really, it's it's grasping on to such a strong identity, which I think General Motors kind of struggles with with a lot of their products. Um, I mean, the only other thing that has such a strong identity would be like the Corvette, right? right? Um, so, or the Camaro, which they killed. Exactly. Yeah. So, so when GM has a vehicle that has such a strong identity, it's really great seeing them latch on to that and I think there's nothing really that competes with in terms of its styling and its abilities both off-road as well as a convertible right. so yes and so I think it's a great choice um you know again you know all interior quirks, quirks aside aside and yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know you know lack of like quality product you know but you know it's it's fine it's, it's fine. fine so you know 
I also chose something that's not really known for its quality, too. Okay. Um, it also has a fiddly roof, just like the Hummer does. Mm -hmm. um, so I went with the OG, though. Probably a slightly more basic choice, but I went with the OG, which is, of course, the Jeep Wrangler. Of course. Um, it is just one of the most capable vehicles. Um, has such a history of being, you know, beach vehicle, mountain vehicle, off-roader. Um, Super versatile. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, it basically can handle any situation. It's yeah. not the most comfortable to ride in, yeah. um, but neither is the Hummer, frankly. Um, and it just gives you the opportunity. You can take the doors off. You can take the higher panels out of the doors. You can take the entire roof off. You can take sections off. Um, the the new one we actually had the opportunity to do the off road event in yesterday. You actually there's actually a power feature now yep. that can wind the, the roof back for roof. you too. So yeah. the sky top roof is available. Yeah. So there's just so many different features now available with the Jeep. Um, and it dates back to the original, right? So, I mean, it just has that lineage, which, of course, you know, is important to me. Um, so I think it's one of the neatest features um, out there. One of the best options out there if you want a convertible SUV, frankly. I absolutely agree. For the price, it's really hard to beat. Um, would you pick a lower-end spec, obviously, because they can get pretty pricey. Very but, pricey, yes. <laughs> I think discovered. the one we rode in yesterday was seventy grand, which is a lot of money for a, a Jeep. Yeah, but there's very few vehicles that offer that kind of versatility. So I think that's a great pick. Yep. All right, uh, stepping up the the game here. We're moving on to our sports car selections. Ooh, sports All right, car. sports cars. Uh, mm -hmm. And for this one, I went with a tried and true classic. Uh oh. Because in my world, you know, sports cars are all about the drive, right? Um, and what better experience would you have than a mid-engine flat six? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and for my pick, it was the Porsche Boxer GTS. Coming in with the four liter flat six. <laughs> well, let me guess, did you pick the same thing? I did. And so this one was, was really, <laughs> really tough for me because yeah. I went, I wrote it down, I crossed it out. Yep. Then I wrote <laughs> the spider in its place. Okay. And then crossed that out and went back to the GTS four liter. And the reason being is because when I want a sports car, you know, I want it to be able to do like the back rows. I want it to be able to cut the corners, carve the corners. I didn't want to have to deal with the fiddly top of the spider. Um, yeah. I just want to be able to push a button in, in yeah. the new box tree and this top goes up top goes down plenty of comfort and you still get that you know four liter flat six howl right over your right shoulder which is just there's nothing like it frankly. No, it's not. just one of the best sounds in the world uh, you know it's funny i had a similar kind of like <laughs> debate internally do i go with the spider because it's such a good looking convertible? oh it looks great oh, like, yeah you're right i mean if i'm driving around and it starts raining that's not what i no, want it's not exactly yeah i mean we can all think back to the, the classic top gear episode of james may exactly. having to put the top up on the original 987 spider <laughs> and it's just absolutely hilarious and yeah. you know uh the new one's a little bit easier of course in the in the uh, 718 and 981 uh, generations but it's still a lot more fiddly than pressing a button. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the the combined aspects of the luxury aspect of having a Porsche, uh, the ability for it to easily lower its roof, the engineering that goes into it, you're not losing a ton by going with a convertible model because mm -hmm. it's designed from the onset by being a convertible. I mean, it's the best of all worlds. It's a little pricey, <laughs> I will admit. Yes. $97,000 is yeah, a lot to spend Yeah, I mean, on about 100000 bucks is pretty <laughs> expensive, especially because you can't find one for yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. But I think there's a reason that it's so expensive and it, it hits on all cylinders. It does. All six. All flat six. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And our last category. Well, there are two. Oh, there's two more categories. There's two more. So our next category yeah. is going to be the Grand Tours. Ah, yes. I love the Grand Tours. Yes, the Grand Tours. So I'll go ahead and start this one off right. uh, since you stole my last one. <laughs> um, <laughs> This one was tough because there's a lot of great there options in this space right now. Like, I mean, of course, they're all hideously expensive, yep. but, you know, <laughs> I kind of really narrowed it down to two, um, which was the Bentley and the Mercedes SL63. And so I chose the Mercedes SL63 all right. um, because it now comes with that 4-liter twin-turbo V8, mm -hmm. makes massive amounts of power, 577 horsepower, 3.5 mm -hmm. seconds to 60. Um, you can actually get it now with all-wheel drive, so now it's an all-year all, 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 all uh, year vehicle, so you can yeah. drive it in the winter if you need to. Um, lapped in comfort, um, so it's just one of, you know, I think the restyle is actually great. It mm -hmm. brings a lot of Mercedes new design language in a cohesive manner in it. Um, it's actually the first one since, what, uh, 2003, yeah, I it's think? Yeah, been a while, um, yeah. That's, that, um, mm -hmm. that doesn't have the folding metal mm -hmm. roof, um, so it's back to the soft top roots, mm -hmm. uh, which I like. Yeah. Um, it's just you know one of the one of the best two seaters out there. So I do love the SL sixty three. Um, I think the new SL is just a wonderful, wonderful car, um, and I can't think of a better way to cross the country in a convertible. I think that is a great pick. Um, 
I struggle with this too because <laughs> Mercedes has great some great oh, choices, yeah. but across the board, there's a lot in mm -hmm. this category. Um, and I went something, I went with something that does have some Mercedes roots and in, in it, um, but maybe, it might maybe be a little, a little bit more elevated. Little Mercedes roots <laughs> with a little British refinement, perhaps. Perhaps you're right. Yeah, I went with the <laughs> Aston Martin DB12 Volante. Volante. In Aston Martin speak, meaning flying. flying. So you get to experience that flying the air around, around you in your That's convertible. Right. But it comes with that AMG V8, um, 671 horsepower, 0 to 60 in about 3.7 seconds. So we're, we're pretty close there. So despite my well, <laughs> lack of 100 horsepower, I'm still faster than you to 60 somehow. Because we are lapped in luxury that inside that X. <laughs> okay. I mean, I would live in that car. I would buy that car and you know what? For a quarter of a million dollars. You might plus. have to live in that car. <laughs> you have to. Uh, but for me, when I do think of convertibles, uh, I don't know, this category does seem to like pull me in because it does have that best of both worlds. You got that con uh, wonderful luxury. This is uh, this particular model, you know, is that super touring mm -hmm. uh, model is, is what Aston Martin's referring to it as. Uh, and I think they're absolutely right. If you want to tear up a back road, it's got you covered. It does. But if you want to just sit and relax and enjoy the view, you got that as well. So mm -hmm. I think it's a fantastic choice. Yeah, There's no, I, I can disagree. Yeah, and, it looks great. You know, the Aston Martin is, an, is another one that I looked at too, yeah. and it's. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, they've done a wonderful job. The interior is second to none. And now with that Mercedes power, like I mean, they just make yeah. gobs and gobs of power and sound great doing it. So, yeah. wonderful choice. Hard to yeah. hard to argue with it there. Excellent. <laughs> I'm glad we agree. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. <laughs> All right. So here's another one where you might have different choices on, okay. which is our supercar. Yes. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. So you can kick us off. All right. Fair enough. Uh, so I, I did struggle with this one because you know we didn't have a, a price limitation on it. I did not. Um, and for me, I don't know, I do tend to err on the side of luxury, but I, I also like exclusivity. And this particular model, when you talk about exclusive, um, it's, it's pretty exclusive. It's already sold out. <laughs> so how are you going to get one? <laughs> well, you, you have $5 million to give me because that's how much it costs. Well, you have to call up. <laughs> so this is the Bugatti W16 Mistral, and this is a hand-built last of the w16 model bugatti so uh, if i was going for a supercar i mean how cool would it be to own the very last w16 bugattis um, they're fantastic looking just so unique this is the fastest convertible in the world all right uh, we're talking about a car that has over 1500 horsepower 1500 that comes from burning dinosaurs okay we're not <laughs> yes. talking about electric cheating horsepower <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay i'm just saying and this is a car that goes over 260 right. miles an to jordan mamara Hey, I, the I said it. Line. I'll stand oh, behind it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a car that goes over 260 miles an hour. So you want to talk about supercar specs all at the same time. It's still pretty luxurious inside. Oh, absolutely. Because it's a Bugatti. It's a Bugatti. It is <laughs> so. completely, completely luxurious. Yeah. Just leather everywhere. Yeah. Metal trim. Carbon fiber trim. I mean, it's just an absolutely beautiful. It's a work of art. Yeah. Like, I mean, all examples of these are never going to be driven. <laughs> They're going to be put in people's collections yeah, and sat there gathering dust, frankly. Yeah. Um, so you will never see one blasting across the country <laughs> no. um, enjoying would, its top down experience. But <laughs> conversely, you might actually see what I have chosen. Okay. So it's still pretty rare. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still supercar, so yeah, you don't see right, them exactly. on every corner here in New York of City. Course. But you might see one at. Uh, you know, Manhattan Auto Cars or something oh, like that. But anyways, okay. I have chosen a McLaren. Okay. In the proper papaya color. <laughs> yes. I've chosen the 600 LT Spider. Ooh, nice pick. Nice. So, one of the things that is very cool about the 600 LT Spider is it has the exhaust exiting out of yes, the top of the deck lid. So cool. And is actually known for having the shortest block to exhaust. Mm-hmm. In any vehicle that's produced right now. And why does that matter, Greg? <laughs> why does that matter? Because you're now in a topless car. You can put that roof down and listen to those yeah. exhausts roaring right <laughs> over your shoulder. That's a really cool experience. Yes. Shooting blue flames because they're so short. <laughs> you can see that right in your rearview mirror. What a child. And just enjoying. Yes, I am a child. I'm a man child. And I love my McLaren. That's the point, though. That's yes, the point. exactly. It's 100% the point. Yeah. And so how better to hear that wonderful exhaust than be topless in your spider? You want to be top? Okay, well, that's for another video. <laughs> Who's being the child now? <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed our convertible roundup. <laughs> From a Mustang convertible. That's right. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on The Driver's Line. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss a thing.